This is truly one of the most instructive games of chess I have ever seen. We see in this game, between Tigrin Petrosian and Vasily Smyslov, how the move of one pawn can lead to the collapse of a position if played against a very high level opponent. And if you're an attacking player, you are really going to love this game. Of course, these two players, two of the greatest to ever play, both Petrosian and Smyslov, had been, had been world champions at different points in their careers. Petrosian has the white pieces. Smyslov has the black pieces. Let us jump right in. This was played in 1961, by the way, the USSR Championship. C4, the English opening played by Petrosian. Knight to F6, Knight C3, controlling the D5 square. E6, Knight F3, and B6. And we see this is a Queen's Indian type of structure, aiming for control of the E4 square. D4. And here, a Bishop B4 was playable pinning that knight and aiding black's control of e4, but instead he plays the queen's Indian idea of bishop to b7, and Petrosian does not want that bishop going to b4, so he plays a3 here to keep that bishop out of that uh, b4 square. d5, black gets his share of the center, cd5, and here Smyslov does not take with the pawn, he takes with the knight to keep this diagonal open for his bishop. He gets a little bit less space because of it, but he gets an active bishop on b7. Uh, knight d5, queen d5, and black has a certainly has an equal position with the bishop and queen controlling the light square diagonal. Uh, so Petrosian goes ahead and plays e3. Bishop e7, bishop to b5, check is played, c6, bishop d3, and c5. Uh, basically two extra moves that were... <laughs> Not necessary, but he could have played bishop d3 and c5. Same position. Um, he could play e4 here, and that leads to an interesting, intense position. But Petrosian goes ahead and takes the knight on d5. Queen takes d5, and we see Smyslov has nice control of this long diagonal, and at the moment is threatening to take on d4 and isolate white's queen's pawn. And that is why Petrosian goes ahead and takes on c5 himself first, so that that pawn does not get isolated. Smyslov takes the pawn at c5, and here we can see we have a, a symmetrical pawn structure with two open files. And in positions like this, uh, development is paramount. I mean, it's always important, but it, with, in this kind of position, whoever has a lead in development usually has a, a real substantial advantage. And so there's a bit of a race here to see who can develop the fastest. Bishop to d2 from white, preparing uh, rook to c1 where that rook will gain a tempo against the queen, which is important when you're developing. Gaining tempos like that matters a lot. Knight to c6, rook to c1, hitting the queen. Queen to d6. Now here's another very important developing move. Queen to c2. And that aims at h7, making it difficult for black to castle. If he castled now, he just played bishop takes h7 check and win a pawn. Uh, so rook to c8, the rook is placed opposite the queen, castles. And because of the threat to this pawn, Smyslov goes ahead and plays h6. Perhaps bishop f6 was better uh, at this point, but the move h6 seems smart enough, right? And then you just castle. You don't have to worry about bishop takes h7 check. Um, but this move actually is the seeds of Petrosian's future plans. And it, it's really amazing how this one pawn move can lead to such a powerful attack for white. Um, Tibiakov, a very strong 2600 plus grandmaster, just wrote a book and he looked at this game and he didn't analyze the game in detail. He just looked at this one move and showed how this move is the seed of, of Black's defeat. So we'll be looking at that here in a second. Uh, rook to d1, again, placing a rook opposite the queen, castles, bishop to c3. And again, we see white is threatening bishop to h7 check, which of course would win the queen. We see Petrosian making these little moves gaining development, but with threats, making it hard for black to keep up with development. So that uh, queen tucks back at b8 so that it's not under threat, but that's sort of another tempo lost, right? So here Petrosian plays queen to a4, threatening queen to e4, shifting and aiming at h7 with threats of mate. Uh, rook f to d8, finishing development for black, and now queen to e4. And it's possible to play bishop f6 here, but after this move, white would win a pawn, and uh, the black king would be flushed into the center. It's possible he would get counterplay on the g and h files. It's, this might have even been his best, best approach, given what happened in the game. Uh, but it's tough to allow your king to go in the middle of the board and give up a pawn. 
So instead he plays g6. And here we see the problem with the earlier move h6. If that move, if that pawn were still on h7, he would have a very strong light squared barrier for that would be very hard for white to break through. But because that pawn moved to h6, now these light squares are very fragile, very vulnerable to a sacrifice. Petrosian's next move highlights this. He plays queen to g4 and is already threatening to take on g6 and demolish this protective barrier around black's king. And that's only possible because of that earlier h6 move. Uh, h5 is played, hitting the queen. The queen goes to h3, avoiding the exchange of queens. If it goes to g3, queens would come off. And keeping pressure on e6 uh, for potential sacrifices. So here, Smith's Law plays f5. Obviously, the threat, by the way, is just bishop g6 check, and uh, the barrier would be destroyed. So f5 is played to bottle up this bishop at d3 and try to keep this queen stuck on the side of the board. And, uh, but the problem, of course, is it makes this king more vulnerable by moving a pawn in front of it. Uh, Petrosian plays bishop to c4 here. Now that e6 has been weakened by the f5 move, he threatens bishop takes e6 check, which would win decisive material. Smyslov first gets one pair of rooks off the board. Rook takes d1 with check, so that has to be dealt with. Rook takes d1. And here he plays king to f7. Now, why would he defend this pawn with his king and when he could just play knight to d8 and defend that way? The reason is, if he plays that, that would allow the knight to go to e5 because it would no longer be controlled by this knight at c6. He's hitting the g6 square. The queen can go to g3, and the whole position would collapse. So king to f7 is played instead to keep control of that uh, pawn. Uh, Petrosian's next move, really strong, really impressive. He plays e4, cracking open the light squared barrier Smyslov has tried to create. If he takes on e4, then queen takes e6 check, and checkmate would soon follow. So Smyslov plays the queen to f4, and uh, even though it's around white's king, it's not an attacking move. He's using this queen to help defend these weak light square points, e6 and f5 in particular, as well as uh, threaten queen e4. Oh, that would be too dangerous really right now. Rook to e1 is played. And now Petrosian is threatening to take on f5, and the queen and the rook would both meet at the e6 square. So queen to g4. Okay, Smyslov wants to get queens off the board, and if he's able to manage that without any more concessions, he'll be okay. He'll be doing fine here. So how does Petrosian prevent that from happening? Well, he takes on f5. Um, now here, black cannot take the queen. If he does, then bishop to e6 check after the king moves, pawn takes. He's threatening the rook. He's also threatening to take on g6, where so that pawn will just be escorted to the queening square. Uh, that would just be totally winning. Um, but even though Smyslov cannot take the queen, you'll notice Petrosian has left his bishop on c4, his very powerful bishop, hanging. This is a sacrifice of a piece. And Smyslov goes ahead and takes that piece. He really doesn't have much choice. Um, but now, if it, if fg6 check, it would be a blunder to take the e6 pawn, because then after king to g8, uh, black is up a piece, and his king is safe enough, and black is actually winning in this position. He's much better, but Petrosian was never planning to do that. He takes on g6 with check. If black retakes that pawn with his king, then rook to e6 check is really bad news. Uh, if king to f7, he can actually play rook takes c6. And the reason he does that is after queen c6, queen h5 check, uh, he could play king to e6, but then knight to d4 checks and forks the king and uh, and the queen. And if he plays the king to g8, then queen to uh, h8 check, king f7, then knight to e5 check. Again, forking the king and the queen. When the king moves, he has to check with the queen to keep the rook from taking it, but then the knight takes the queen, and he's just lost there. So Smyslov cannot take that pawn on g6. So he plays the king to e8 instead. Now g7. Petrosian threatens to play g8, promoting to a queen with check. Obviously, that would be the end of the game. Smyslov plays e5, clearing the way for his own queen to control g8 to keep the pawn from queening. Queen takes h5 check, hits the king, 
He cannot interpose with his own queen because then Petrosian would promote to a queen and this queen cannot take that because it's pinned. And that would be with check and obviously that would be it. So the king needs to move. King to d7. Rook to d1 check. Here bishop to d6. If king to e6, this powerful idea, knight to e5, uh, with the threat of queen to f7 mate, uh, also threatening the queen at, uh, at c4. So knight would need to take, but then queen to e5 check, king f7, and then very quickly uh, he would be mated. So that would not work at all. So Smyslov instead blocks that rook's check with his bishop. Now bishop takes e5. This bishop is being piled up on. The bishop can't take because it's pinned, but the knight can. The problem is if the knight takes, knight takes e5 check, and it forks the king and the queen, the bishop again cannot take that knight because it's pinned by the rook at d1. Really strong. But instead, knight to d4 is played. Smyslov is knowingly giving up a piece in an attempt to block the d-file pressure. And of course, a terrible mistake would be rook takes d4, right? Because that would allow a back rank mate, and uh, black would actually win in that case. Uh, but instead, of course, Petrosian takes with his knight. And in this position, with the king stuck in the middle of the board and these extra pawns, Smyslov resigned. A possible conclusion is bishop takes e5, knight to f3 check, discovered check with the rook, king c7, queen to e5 check, keeping the king from hiding on the a8 square, flushing him out, then rook to d6 check, forcing the king back to c7, then rook to e6, and then king to d8 or d7. It doesn't matter. This would be checkmate. So one pawn move, just moving that pawn from h7 to h6 seems so innocent, but in the hands of a, a beastly player like Tigran, Petro, Tigran Petrosian, he's able to take that one move and parlay it into a bigger, unstoppable attack. A brilliant performance. I hope you enjoyed the game. See you soon at Chess Dog. Goodbye.